Okay, so today we're going to look at reverse percentages. I'm going to be using something called the bar method, and I am going to explicitly be looking at non-calculator methods here, although I will discuss what I would do if I did have a calculator for a type of question like this. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes, because uh, we've got a few different types of questions to have a look at here. Now we're going to start off by having a look at when things have been reduced in value. Typically that's going to be in a sale, um, but we'll have a look at some different scenarios here. So this first one says a washing machine has been reduced in a sale by 20%, and then it says the sale price is £512, work out the original cost and it's that language there that hints to us that this is a reverse percentage, working out the original cost, we're going back into the past. Now when we've got a sale price of 20%, that means something's been reduced in value. So what I do is I draw this little bar out and I think, okay, well I've got 80% and 20%. Okay, so I'm getting a little sale here. And we've got 20% and we've got the original, eight, or the new 80% there once we've got our little sale. So what we've got to think here is, it gives us this price, it says... £512 is the sale price. Now this 20% here, this little bit, is always going to be our little discount. Okay, so that's the amount of money that we're getting off. There we go, so that's the discount. And this is the price we pay. Okay, there we go. Price we pay. And obviously when it comes to real life, unless there is an absolutely enormous discount on, it's more than likely that we're just getting the little bit there, that 20%. So what we've got to do is read the wording and see what that is. So it says the sale price is £512. So that's the amount of money we're actually going to pay. So if we're going to actually be paying £512, that's the 80%. So straight away I just write down 80% equals £512. There we go. And that's the first bit of the process here. Now all we've got to do is, we, well, the thing is, we don't actually want to know 80%, we want to know 100%. We want to know the original cost, the original 100 before that 20% was uh, taken off there. So in order to do that, we've got to figure out what percentage can we turn this into, this 80%, so that we can turn it back into 100. Obviously with, there is a number that you can times 80% by, but without a calculator it's going to be really hard to work out. Now if we can, if we can get it down to 10% or 5%, that would be really useful because we can turn that into 100% quite easily. So 80%, you've just got to think, what can you divide 80 by to get 10%? Okay, And actually we can divide 80 by 8. So we can divide that by 8 and that would give us 10%. So if we divide that by 8, we'd also have to divide this 512 by 8. Okay, whatever you do to one side, you do to the other here. So, in actually, to, in order to divide that by 8, we're probably going to have to do some written methods. So, I'm going to use a little bit of bus stop division. So, 512 divided by 8, and we're going to work that out. So, if we go ahead and divide that by 8, 8 doesn't go into 5, um, but it goes into 50 up to 48, doesn't it? So, that's 6 times. It goes up to 48 with a remainder of 3 there leaving us with 32, and 8 goes into 32 four times, there we go, so 64, so 10% was 64 of that original cost. Now we can turn that back into 100%, because once we've got 10%, to get that back to 100, you would times by 10, and that would give us 100%, so 100% there, timesing 64 by 10, would give us £640, there we go, so our final answer there is 640. Let's have a look at another question, but before we do so, just a little note is if you did have a calculator here, once you'd identified that 80% was a 512 in this step right here, if you have a calculator, and I'll write this to the side, you could just divide by 80, so 80% on a calculator, you could do divide by 80, which will give you 1%, and then you can just times by 100. So it's a slightly different process there, it's a lot easier if you have a calculator, because once you get 1% times by 100, or just add two noughts on, and that will get you to 100%. Okay, but that only works if you have a calculator there. It's probably unlikely we're going to do, do want to do 512 divided by 80 and then times it by 100 without a calculator. Okay, so on to a different one here. A mobile phone is reduced in a sale by 30%, and the mobile phone is reduced by £252. That seems like quite a big discount there. Let's have a look. Work out the original cost. So a mobile phone is reduced in a sale by 30%, so if we draw these little bars, we've got our little one here, which is 30%, and to make that up to 100, the other bar there would be 70%. And there we go. So that 30% is the sale, the amount we're getting off, the discount, and that 70% there is the amount we actually have to pay. Now it says in the question, let's have a look, let's highlight this, the mobile phone is reduced by £252. So it doesn't say that's what we're going to pay, it says that's what it's been reduced by. So that's the amount of money that we're saving there, so that's pretty good, a pretty good saving, £252, and that here there is my 30%, that is the saving, that's what it's been reduced by. So in this case, 30%, the smaller percentage here, equals 
252 pounds. There we go. And from there, once we've identified the correct percentage, we're just gonna follow the exact same process, turning that into a percentage that can then be turned back into 100. Now 30, you've always got to think in this case, can you just straight up t times it by anything to get 100? 30 you can't, because times it by two you get 60, times it by three you get 90, and then you go beyond 100. So we are gonna to have to break it down first. So I'm just gonna divide it by three. If I divide it by three, that'll give me 10%, which I can then just times by uh, times by 10. So dividing that by three, again, I'm just gonna do it to the side with a little bit of a bus stop. So 252 divided by three. Three doesn't go into two, but it goes into 25 up to 24 and that's eight times with a remainder of one, and then it goes into 12 four times, so there we go, 84 pounds is 10% there. And from there, we can turn it into 100%, times it by 10 again, so times by 10, and we get 100%, our original cost equaling 840 pounds when we times that by 10. There we go, times that by 10. All right, perfect, so that's how we go about doing our reverse percentage using a bar method. Again, if we had a calculator there, once we got that 30% equals 252, which is the key thing that you have to identify here, we could just divide by 30 and times by 100 on a calculator, and that would get us straight back there. You just gotta be very careful, because what people tend to do in this instance is work out 30% or work out 70% of that amount and then um, add that back on. So we, unfortunately we can't do that with a reverse percentage here. You do have to write that statement down, what percentage is actually given to you in the question there, and then think about breaking it down to 10% and building it back up. Okay, so here's some for you to have a go at. Okay, so pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers to these in a second. Okay, so let's have a look. We've got the first one. A computer has been reduced in a sale by 30%, so let's get that, 30%, and the sale price is 980. So that 980 pounds is the amount that we're actually gonna pay. So if we draw our little bars, we've got 30% being the sale amount, and we've got 70% being the amount we actually pay for it. So this is the 70%. It says the sale price is 980. So 70% equals 980. And then we just need to go about breaking that down and building it back up. So we'll divide by seven to get 10%. Divide by seven gives us 10%. And if we do 980 and divide that by seven as well, I'm gonna to have to do that to the side. So 980 divided by seven. Seven goes into nine once, remainder two. Seven goes into 28 four times, and then zero. There we go, so 140 pounds is 10%. So finishing this off, turn it back into 100, times it by 10. Times that by 10 there. There we go, and we get £1,400 as our original amount for that first question. Let's have a look at the second one. So a jacket has been reduced in a sale by 40%, and the jacket is reduced by £64. There we go, so reduced by, so that's the amount that we're saving. So if we draw our bars here, this is quite a good, good discount, this 40%, so 40% and 60%. There we go. And we just need to identify actually what that percentage is. So it's been reduced by 64. So that is the actual reduction there. Not that this one's particularly small, it's quite a large reduction. So that's the 40% there, that's the sale. Okay, so that's how much we're saving. So 40% equals uh, the 64 pounds. And then again, we just need to break that down. So. We could, um, to be fair, there's two ways of doing this. We could halve it, we could get 20%, and then build that up instead. I'm gonna to stick to getting down to 10%, but we could actually divide it by two and then build it up from there. But I'm just gonna divide it by four. We'll get the same answer either way. So we get 10% when we divide it by four. 64 divided by four. We might be able to do that without a bit of a stop. Uh, what is it, 16? So 16 pounds. 64 divided by four, obviously just do a little bit of a stop though to the side if you're not sure. You don't actually have to just do that in your head. And then on to the next one, times it by 10 and we get 100% equaling 160, there you go, we should add the zero on, that's quite like, why I quite like getting the 10% because you just add the zero on there to get it to 100. Right, there we go, let's have a look at somewhere we've got an increase in value. Okay, so a new printer costs 288 pounds once 20% VAT has been added on. Work out the cost of the printer before the VAT. Okay, so this is quite common uh, type of question here because it's obviously used in business. Businesses can claim back the VAT. So if we have a look at what we've got here, when it's an increase in value, we are, do have to draw these bars slightly differently because although we've still got these two sections here, we've got the 20% being added on, but that was added on to the original 100%. So we've got 100% the original cost, but now 20% has been added on this extra VAT. So in this question here, we've got the VAT, and that's the cost of the VAT. 
This is the original cost or the cost without the VAT. And then you've got the total in this case, which is the cost plus the VAT, and that is 120%. So slightly harder when we've got an increase here, so we've got three to look at. Now the original, the original costs there, we're not going to be looking at because that's actually that's actually what we're working out here. Work out the cost before VAT. So in this instance, we've got either the 20% or the 120% down the bottom there once that 20% has been added on. So it says a new printer costs 288 pounds once the VAT has been added on. So you've just got to ask yourself the question: Is that the VAT that's been added on, or is that the price I'm actually going to have to pay the 120% down here? And that actually, if you read the wording there a new printer costs 288 pounds it doesn't say that 288 pound VAT has been added on it says that's what it costs so that is the 120 percent so I'm just going to write down that statement 120 percent equals 288. Now I'm just going to take the exact same approach here I'm going to divide this down and build it back up but it's slightly harder here I've got to think what am I going to divide 120 by to get 10 and if you think, what do you times 10 by to get 120? That's 12. So in order to get down to 10, I'm going to have to divide by 12. So if we divide by 12, let's work that out, divide by 12. Not as nice when you're dividing by a double digit, but we can do that with just using a little bit of bus stop. Again, just being nice and careful when you do this. So I'll do this to the side. We've got 200, oh, 288 divided by 12. And let's figure that out. So 12 goes into 28 twice, up to 24. Remainder 4. And then it goes into 48 four times, so 24 there is our 10%. Okay, so 10% equals 24 pounds. And then nice and easy from there, just like the rest of these questions, we just times it by 10. So times that by 10, and that'll get us our 100%. So 100% equals, and that'll be 240 pounds. And there's our final answer there. So obviously just making sure you write that with your pound sign. That's 240 pounds as a final answer. Let's have a look at one more. So increasing in value again, it says a bus pass rises in value by 15%. The bus driver, uh, the bus pass rises by an additional £24. Work out the cost of the bus pass before the increase. So if we have a look at it this time, we've got the original cost, which is 100%. And this time an additional 15% is being added on. So there we go, 15%. And again, in total there, that gives us a combined cost or a combined total of 115%. So we just need to figure out, is this gonna be the 115% after the increase or is it just the 15% increase? Obviously the 100% here, which we're always trying to work out is the original cost. And that's actually what we're trying to work out. So it's not gonna have given us the original. Um, but it's going to have given us one of the other two, so 15 or 115. Now it says the bus pass rises by an additional £24. So it doesn't say that's what we're going to pay. It doesn't say we're going to pay £24. It says that's what it rises by. And it rises by this 15% here. This is the rise or the additional amount of money. So if the rise is 24, then 15% equals £24. Now this isn't very nice here. We've got to think differently now because obviously we're not going to want to divide by 15 here because we've not got a calculator we are doing it on calculator so we've got to think what can I divide 15 by to get to a number that gets me up to 100 now you could think oh, okay or I could divide by 1.5 that would get you down to 10% but that seems a bit overly complicated when actually you could divide this by 3 and that would give you 5% which is probably a little bit easier to do so if we can do that if we can bring it down to 5% 5% is okay that can turn into 10% and then 100% so let's just divide it by 3 and get 5% so something slightly different here, obviously we're not going down to 10%, we're going to have to think a little bit outside the box with this one. And then 24 divided by 3 is 8. And there we go, so we've got our 5% is 8. Now it's up to you, obviously we could times that by 20, that would get us straight to 100, but there's nothing stopping you from just timesing that by 2 to start with, just to get back to that 10%, if you like getting the 10% there, and that gets you £16. So once you've got your 10%, it's obviously the same as the rest, so if 10% is 16, you're going to times that by 10 to get your 100%, and that would give you £160 as your final answer there. Okay, so obviously just write in your final answer, we have £160 as our original cost of the bus pass. Okay, so here's two for you to have a go at. Okay, so here's two questions. The first one there is about a car cost. It's quite a large number, don't let that throw you. Obviously just use a bit of a stop for that. Uh, but have a go at these two and I'll go over the answers in a sec. Okay, so the first one, a car costs £7,680 once the 20% VAT has been added on. Work out the original price. So let's have a look. We've got our 100%. We've got our additional 20%. And then you've got your full cost there, which is 120%. 
Okay, so for this one here, £7,680, it says that's what the car costs, so that is the 120%. So, writing that down, 120% equals 7680 and we need to divide that then down. Let's have a look, how do we get 10%? We could probably do this in an easy way, you could probably divide it by 2 and break it down that way, but I'm just going to divide it by 12. So if we divide it by 12, that'll give us 10%. So 10% equals, and let's just do the working out for that. So 7,680 divided by 12, and let's have a think. How many times does 12 go into 76? So it goes five times up to 60, six times up to 72. So let's change the color here so we can see this. So six times up to 72, remainder four, goes into 48 four times, and then zero on the end. There we go, so 10% is 640 pounds. So 640, and then times in that by 10 to get our 100%. So times it by 10, and we get 100% for this one, equals 6400. So 6400, and that was just timesing it by 10 at the end. There we go, times by 10. Right, moving on to the next one. Let's have a look at this one. It says an annual train ticket rises in value by 15%, and the cost of the increase is 36 pounds. Work out the cost of the train ticket before the increase. So obviously we've got our 100% again, our original cost that we're trying to work out. And this time we've got an additional 15% being added on. 15%. So our total cost there is 115%. There we go. So is it the 15 or is it the 115? Now it says the cost of the train, the cost of the increase is 36 pounds. So it says the increase is the 15% here, the extra bit is 36 pounds. So if we write that down, 15% equals 36. There we go, so let's just have a think, what could we break this down by? So 15%, if we divide that by three, that gives us 5%. So 5% equals 36 divided by three is 12. And there we go, and we can build that back up to 100%, however you like, there you could straight away times it by 20, or you could think about just timesing it by two and then timesing it by 10, up to you. Let's do it that way, let's times it by two. So times by two, would give us 10%, which equals 24, and then times it by 10 to finish it off to get 100%. So 100% equals 240. All right, brilliant, there's the end of that then. They are the final questions. Obviously go back, practice these again if you're not sure. But that's the end of uh, reverse percentages using the bar method, obviously explicitly using non-calculator there. We could use a method, different method with a calculator, but that's the end of that. So I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope you found it useful. As always, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one. Mm -hmm.